What is up guys, Pirate here. Now today, we're going to be doing a long, long, longly requested video, a well-awaited video for many of you guys, and something that I just figured would kind of bring us back to the past. I know I've done a lot of non-reptile related videos, but trust me, I'm not getting out of reptiles. I still definitely have them. But we're going to be getting into the complete cane toad care. And so I have Gucci, my cane toad, that's thriving. I thought I'd make a care video so many people want to see that. So what better video to make then? So let's just get started with the cane toad care video. So here's my cane toad setup. Now it's a little extravagant. Uh, you don't have to do as far out as I went. But she could also have more. So we're just going to go through all the topics and subjects of what your animal will need from feeding to hydration, to lighting, to substrate, cleaning, decor, everything like that, we're going to go through. So this may be a bit of a longer video, but it's going to be well worth it. So let's get started. Oh my goodness. Come here, Gucci. Come here, Gucci. Ah, come on, come ah, on, Toad. Come on. I got it. There we go. So this is Gucci. He's about the size of my hand. And my hand's not super small either. So with feeding... Cane toads will eat almost anything. They're not picky eaters. They love to eat. And they'll eat anything from roaches to crickets to worms of any sort. It could be super worms, mealworms, wax worms. Wax worms might be a little small, but they'll even eat that. Uh, they'll eat mice. Gucci, she loves herself some small mice and small rats. And she'll even eat chicks. So she's a pretty beast of a toad. Uh, I might as well just throw in a worm so you guys can just get a glimpse of her capabilities. Just look at this beast. No problem for her. So that's pretty much the only time she really likes to come out is when food or water is available. Uh, I plan on getting her a 75 gallon enclosure. That would probably take up more than this whole rack alone. So I'll have to think about how I'm going to do this because it's a lot of, a lot of enclosure space it's going to take up. But that will come in the future. That's not going to be yet. Ooh, she might just eat that roach. And she got the roach, guys. So she, she's a pretty, pretty crazy eater. Let's continue on. But anyways, guys, as I said, don't eat just about anything. As you see, she ate roaches and worms, no problem. Uh, King Toads, though, one good thing to give them is mice because they're high in protein and calcium due to the bones and the higher buildup of meat on the animal. So... When your cane toad gets large enough, I would definitely suggest trying to feed, like, mice or anything like that. So, yeah, that's pretty much it for feeding. Let's continue on to our next topic. On to water. Now, there's nothing very special about it. Water is water. The only few things I suggest is either use distilled water, spring water, or RepiSafe. This here is RepiSafe. This is what I use for pretty much all my animals. Uh, the only things that don't have RepiSafe are like my foggers and things like that that I don't want to get clogged up. Uh, RepiSafe provides extra electrolytes, uh, calcium, it lowers pH and alkalinity for fish or even just for your water alone. It lowers acidity, it actually helps build a slime coat for your amphibian because toads and frogs have really sensitive skin. It helps strengthen their skin. This stuff is a really good way to go. And it's like $8 for this bottle, but for all these reptiles I have... Which I have a lot, and all these reptiles use water. Uh, this bottle lasts me about two months. Two, three months. So it lasts me a good while for the amount I have and for the price. So honestly, guys, RepiSafe is some really good stuff. I really suggest buying it. Um, you could also use, as I said, spring water, like the gallons of spring water or distilled water. Uh, spring water just is going to be a little bit more expensive over time, especially as you get more and more animals. So, Refty Safe is the way to go, guys. Uh, you just add a couple of drops into your water, and you'll be all good. So, what I'll do is I'll have a gallon. I'll fill that up in normal tap water, add a couple of drops, let it uh, dissolve into the water for a few minutes, and then just pour it into her bowl after it's been cleaned out. As you can see, she gets her bowl very, very, very quickly. That's just Gucci for you. Uh, it's part of the maintenance of a cane toad. They love water. Now, having a good water bowl is very key for cane toads. Their scientific name is actually Bufo marianus. Marianus being marine. Marine being water. These toads thrive in water. 
and they're even been known to thrive in really toxic sewage water. They'll thrive in just about any sort of water. Eventually, it'll have an effect on them. So, of course, you don't want to just get sewage water for your toad and put it in there or, or pool water or anything like that because that will, over time, have an effect on your animal. But these guys are really hardy overall. So, definitely give them a good water dish. One time, or sometime, hopefully I plan on getting her 75 gallon, as I said, cutting it in half, having a filtered body of water, and then the other half being land. I think she would really love that uh, since they spend so much time in water and so much of their backstory has to do with water. Water is very essential. Make sure you got good clean water and a large enough water bowl. You don't have to do anything fancy. I've just got this like ceramic bowl. It does the job. It keeps the water in. Uh, so and that was like 12 bucks. So that's water. Now let's move on to cage size. Now for enclosure size. Basically, Gucci's enclosure right now is a 40 gallon. It technically could last her her entire life, but she's still just a little cramped. A male, for sure, you could keep in a 40 gallon. A male cane toad you could keep in a 40 gallon, no problem. But a female like Gucci that'll get about twice the size of the males, you're gonna have a little bit more of a problem. So Gucci, when I got her, I didn't know she was male or female. I really didn't care. I just wanted a cane toad, which I'm ready to deal with her hassle. But a ca good cage size is very important because these guys are fairly active, especially when it comes to getting water or getting food. So a 75 gallon at the most and a 40 gallon at the least. If there's something in between, that'll work too. But that's my main suggestion for enclosure size. So if she's in a 40 gallon front opening, you could do a regular 40 like that one or a big front opening like this one. I prefer this one just because it looks nicer. So that's up to you. So yeah, let's continue on to the next subject. Now onto the lighting of the Buffo Marianas species. So with these toads, lighting is not necessarily important, especially like UVB or UVA, because of the fact that they're nocturnal, so they won't ever really need it. Now, I would always prefer to keep my animal with some form of lighting, whether it produces UVB, UVB or not, but you just don't want your animal to sit in a dark spot. You don't want it to be, you know, all in this dark area. It's just not good for the animal's health. So, even if it's just a regular house light, that works, or just the ambient light from the room, that works as well. Now, I happen to get really lucky thanks to some friends of mine, and I got hooked up with this right here. Now, this is a Zoom Ed light. It's super awesome. It's got a remote, it's an LED light, and it can change colors, sounds, and things like that. So, if you wanted to turn it to nighttime, we just go like that. And so, normally at night, the whole room would be dark, and this blue light would be shining more. If we wanted, uh, let's see, rainforest sounds. I don't know if you can hear that, but it's like a bird chirp, like a rainforest sound. Then there's just normal daytime sounds and all sorts of things. Now my favorite setting is the rain and thunder. As you can see, it's super cool. And so things like this are really kind of neat to have. I wouldn't say a cane toad needs stuff like this. But it might just be a cool added effect. It makes the enclosure look better. And if you had live plants, it would help the plants grow. But as I said, you don't need lighting like that. So you could simply do something like this. This is just a regular LED bulb from Walmart and just a regular light you can buy at Home Depot or Lowe's. These plants are growing with it, but let alone that, you could use that on her. Doesn't produce much heat or anything like that. So that would be wonderful for a king toad. Anything like that, like that, or even like those. Uh, so that brings us to our next subject. These guys do not need heating. They don't need anything like that. As a matter of fact, they are from South America normally, where it generally doesn't get super duper hot. Just more humid. You really want to keep up humidity, but heat-wise, you don't need. Well, my house stays around room temperature. She doesn't. She's never been on heating, and she's thriving. So I'm kind of playing it by year. But as far as I'm aware, you definitely do not need heating. And you don't need any sort of heating like these guys use, or even like my Sonoran Desert Toads use. You don't need any heating like that. That'll dry out your toad too fast. So yeah, guys. That's it for lighting. Let's continue. Now, just another little tip is for humidity-wise, definitely spray down soil. Add plants and stuff, not just for decor, but for the humidity. And make sure your humidity is at 70 to 80%. 
That's what it is best at. You don't want to soak them too much, but you don't want to dry them out too much. So that's just a little thing I thought I'd throw in. Now with decor. Now with King Toads, you don't need too much fancy decor or anything. You could just do it simply how I have it here. Just a good hide, a good some good plants to help with humidity um, and help with coverage. Water bowl, dirt, and even a background if you wanted. Now, since Gucci is just my favorite animal in the whole universe, I like to spoil her and add things that you don't need, like that light, that background, or even like one of those plants. Things like that you don't need for a cane toad. So if you're on a budget, you could get away with two of these plants or one of these plants, regular 40 gallon tank, some dirt, a good water bowl, and a good hide. Uh, but since Gucci is my favorite animal, I spoil her a bit. So that's what she gets. So decor wise, and you can always add branches, things like that. Just remember not to overcrowd your tank. Especially since cane toads are so large, they already take up a lot of space on their own. You don't want to just take up more space by overcrowding. So just make sure you give them some good plants for coverage and for humidity. Good thick layer of dirt and things like that. That brings us to our next topic, being substrate. What kind of substrate should I use for my cane toads, you may be wondering. There's many different options, many, many, many different options. If you don't want to have to put isopods in the springtails or anything like that, you could get away with EcoWorth. That works perfectly fine. You'll just have to change it out a bit more. Now, the substrate I use, Zilla Jungle Mix. Now, this stuff, it's got plenty of nutrients and things like that inside of it. As you can see, it's really good stuff. And it's really good for helping a colony of isopods and springtails to grow. That's one thing I suggest is the Zilla substrate mix you could always put in there and put some isopods and springtails. That'll thrive and that'll help keep your cane toad enclosure way, way, way cleaner. Because that's one thing is they do poop a lot and they do make a mess a lot, especially when you feed them. So if you were to be able to add some isopods and springtails with some good substrate, that is just perfect. That will be way better for your cane toad and for the overall health of the enclosure and animal. So yeah, you can use eco uh, Jungle Mix, anything like that, as long as it's got good, good amounts of it. So you want to have about 3 to 4 inches at the least and more if you can, uh, the more the merrier sort of deal. Uh, give it a lot of room to burrow because they definitely love to burrow. That's one thing that's very important with them is burrowing. So definitely give them a good layer of good healthy substrate. And like with my toad, I add in little bits of leaf litter that will help the isopods and springtails eat off of it and colonize it and thrive more. Things like that. Fairly simplistic, but those are some things I suggest adding. So let's continue on to how we're going to clean these guys. How about that? Now these guys, as I said, are pretty messy. With cleaning, there's many, many different options. You can use vinegar, 3% uh, bleach and the rest water mix. You can use, you know, over, like normal reptile cleaners, things like that. Now I'm going to show you what I would suggest. So for wiping glass uh, and like the railings like this, I would suggest Zilla Terrarium Cleaner. This stuff is it, really good. It helps repel dust and things like that and debris. Um, like fine debris. It's, it cleans, of course, and it's safe for the animal. You can actually clean with this while your animal's in the enclosure, as long as you don't directly spray the animal. Uh, it doesn't put off a strong smell of any sort, and it keeps it puts off like an ornate smell, so it won't give you this scentsy smell, but it won't give you this horribly stinky smell. So this stuff I really like. You could also use Zoomed Wipeout. You could use vinegar, as I said, bleach and water mixture. And then when I go to clean out her actual enclosure and her substrate, I'll just scoop out as much of the isopods and springtails. And I'll flip the enclosure on its side, of course, with her not in it. And then I'll hose off all her dirt, add a little bit, a little bit of Dawn soap just to sterilize it. Spray that Dawn soap around and then completely get away all the soap, leftover soap and things like that and then dry it off and then repeat by putting the substrate in and stuff like that. That's what I do. Uh, that's what I suggest doing is just put some soap in there, clean off the soap, use that to clean the glass and spot clean every now and then. And if you see any super big turds that the isopods or springtails may not be getting to, just scoop that up and get rid of it. If you do those things, cane toads don't need to be changed near as often. So I've only had to change her out twice since I've gotten her. I've had her for quite a while. But that's because I've added isopods and springtails, and I've spot cleaned her and things like that. So that's what I would suggest cleaning-wise. 
So yeah, guys, that about does it for today's video. Just some of the main things I suggest, just lots of food, lots of water, good amount of substrate, and a good enclosure size. Uh, as I said, they don't need any special lighting or heating. Uh, just make sure you feed them really well. They love food. That's one thing I had to learn the hard way with her. I've gone through many and many and many of roaches and worms and mice with that toad. But that's about it. Leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.